In the past few days, a video has resurfaced that has caused a social media storm. Mm. Because it appears to suggest that former astronaut Buzz Aldrin, right, maybe the most famous of all astronauts, has admitted that he never actually landed on the moon. Well, I don't want to well, 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 well. Well, actually, I might be it turns out the video is, is a few years old um, and they say Buzz was misquoted, but that did get us all talking this morning. Talking. Of course, it, it brings up that debate again. Um, and actually, it's been revealed that the majority of young people believe the moon landings were fake. So the percentage of people that feel, believe it's fake, a large percentage of those yes. are young people. Yes. Where we were there. See, when you get into it percentages, was, it yeah, all goes like wrong. Yes, anyway, basically, basically, most young, young people, people between yeah. 16 and 34, they think this was faked, this didn't happen, and we've got a few questions. Questions um, for that. In the next few months, the topic's going to arise again. There's a big film out. It stars Ryan Gosling. It's based on the life and times of Neil Armstrong. So let's put the point to bed on the conspiracy side. Uh, in the studio now, we have Martin Kenny, and on the opposing side, um, scientist, cosmologist Sarah Bosman. Uh, Martin, we, we have to go to you first of all. Why do you think it didn't happen? Well, uh, there's overwhelming proof um, that it didn't happen. Um, there's people researching yeah. uh, this topic a lot more. We're in the age of technology now. I think in the past, like you're saying, um, we had no way of verifying anything we were told. So we saw the moon landings, well, you saw the moon landings, and uh, you believed it, but there was no way for you to check any of it. And now we're in the age of technology, as you said, a lot of the young people believe that it was faked, and that's because they are now investigating for themselves. They're looking at the footage, they're looking at the data, they're looking at all the the stuff surrounding that whole moon, can, you know. OK, well, we're going to look at some, some pictures yep. because, my friend, I was 10 years of age. I lived it, I breathed it, I, I wanted to believe it, I yep. certainly wanted to believe it. So what, what are we seeing here? I'm seeing a flag uh, moving, I'm seeing the astronauts there yep. on, on the surface. What do you see? What do you believe that is? Um, staged. Staged, like a movie. I've seen many sci-fi movies that look more realistic than that. I watched Interstellar but, and it looked way more Martin, realistic than that. So, so many people would have to be involved. That's my. This is what it comes down to to me. I mean, I to cover find up a it very interesting. Right. I find it very interesting, and we'll talk to, to Sarah in a minute about the scientific side that she believes. But for me personally, I just think far too many people would have had to, to cover it up. Cover up for far too many years. Well, how many people to never have slipped up? How many people have supposedly gone beyond low Earth orbit, beyond 200 miles off the Earth? No idea. 24. The entire history of humanity. But what? But twenty-four what? people. So your point yes, but is what? only twenty-four. But, but so what, what I'm Ruth's saying, saying is, is there was a whole control centre, operations centre, backup control, all sorts of things. Do you know what happens Building in the rocket. finance department of ITV? In the no finance idea. department. No idea. Except do you know what happens? Do you know what happens in the executive office of ITV? Right at the top. No, but if they somebody was covering nothing. something, they up. tell you nothing exactly. Yeah, but if, so if something some... did happen, but if somebody's covering you... something up, yeah. everybody would have to cover it up. No, they wouldn't, because you would know Sarah, about what it. what do you think? Well, there are also a lot of engineers, of course, working on these for years and years. They had to come into their job every morning, mm -hmm. thinking they were developing a rocket. And that, that's thousands of people being involved in the development and the testing in the labs, people overseeing the labs. It's not only the 24 people who actually went off the earth. It's, a, it's the whole organisation of NASA and the Apollo programmes, and it's a, it's a ton of people. Yeah. On that and when we're looking at the pictures there of what we believe was the moon landing, uh, and, and Martin is saying that's completely staged, what do, what do you see when you look at those pictures? Could that have been staged? I don't think it could have been staged. I think uh, the argument you, you brought up with the number of people involved is a, is a, is a good one. I think it just takes way too many well, people look, involved. Well, tell you the first in the thing I flag. see, the flag's waving. The flag's waving. There's no wind up on the moon, is there? No, there's no wind up on the moon, that's true. Uh, that's why when NASA sent the flag, uh, they actually put a bar on top of it so that it yeah. would stand up. It's only hanging from this bar at the top. It's something they were very uh, open about. And the reason you see it, like, kind of below... Um, yeah. Yeah. It's because on the moon, just like on Earth, if you flick something, it will come back. <laughs> Things can still yeah. oscillate a bit, even Martin, if there's no air. you will add to that the position of the sun shadows. You will add to that that today, using today's technology, you cannot see footprints, which you believe shouldn't have ever blown away. Yep. Well, here's the smoking gun. Here's yep. the smoking gun. We can argue all day long about, yep. you know, what I think, what we... We've never been to the moon. None of us have been, you know, below the surface, a certain sure. you know, altitude. Now, the only way we can discern whether this happened or not is by analysing and studying the actual data that was taken during 
those Apollo missions, right? The scientific no, that's data. That's not true. Hold on, hold on, let me finish, let me finish, right? So that's the telemetry data, right? So during those four years that they did the Apollo missions, they collected loads of data, you know, uh, biometrical data, uh, design blueprints, etc., etc. Right. To end this, if we had the data now, and we could scrutinize it, if we could test it, which yeah. is the scientific method, test it, it's observe not, it's not and research. <coughs> not only has it not been released, NASA destroyed it. Well, or lost Why it. would they have destroyed N it? NASA or well, lost it or well not hang on, hang on. Donald Petit, Donald Petit, NASA astronaut and chemical engineer. This is a direct quote from him. There's a video of him actually saying this, and I quote, okay. I'd go to the moon in a nanosecond. The problem is we don't have the technology to do that anymore. We right. used to, right, but, but right. we destroyed Sarah, the technology Sarah. and it's a painful process to build up again. Oh, You're course, a in that context, absolutely. In that context, absolutely, I completely agree with him. The technology we had at the time was so ridiculously obsolete, there was nothing we could do with it anymore. It's like if you have a car from 60 years ago that was unique, if you try to repair all the parts one by one, it's going to take you way too much money. We don't run cars that way anymore. It was scrapped eventually because it was just too outdated. So, of course, it was destroyed, the technology in that sense. We don't have it anymore. It wouldn't run. But Sarah, um, we got the technology together to go there. Why haven't we been back since, is it, what, the 70s? Uh, I think it's, it comes down to the funding. I think uh, after America went to the moon a few times, the people in power uh, told the, the voters, uh, why are we spending all so much money on this? Why don't we elect a party who will put yeah. our taxes to do something else? And unfortunately, it was the last time in history where so much of your taxes went to science and research and technology. It's been cut down a lot, I think, mostly for political reasons. But you see, Martin actually believes what we think. Some people believe the moon's made of cheese. What do you think the moon is made of? What I know the moon is, it's a luminary. That's all I know. What, what it shines? It's a luminary, it's, it's, a, it's a luminary of some sort. So I can't go beyond that. And, you know, again, we're living in the age of technology. You know, you've got a P900 camera now you can buy for under a thousand pounds yeah. and you can zoom in to the moon that's supposed to be by the way 238,000 miles away in deep dark space and yet you can zoom in quite close in detail yeah, yeah. with a commercial camera and people have taken photographs and images showing it's sometimes translucent you can see through it right sometimes it's got something called a lunar wave there are many videos showing the moon with a lunar wave we don't know what that is it's all a mystery. So you believe you couldn't possibly land on it because it's Absolutely not solid? Not. Right, Absolutely so not. So you're a cosmologist, Dr. Sarah Bosman. Uh, what is the moon made of? He's saying it's, you couldn't land on it because it's not solid. Well, I've actually brought pictures with me today um, of uh, different missions that have been to the moon to follow up where the Apollo missions first landed. We have sent other satellites there to take pictures from around the moon. And you can actually see, so that's an example from a Japanese satellite. So on the right, it went around the moon to take a radar map. So from the top of the moon, scanning down the heights of the mountains of the moon. That was only a few years ago. And you get the picture on the right, which is this uh, radar measured from space. And on the left is the background to an Apollo mission on the same spot. Uh, and if they had to guess these mountains for the Apollo mission, they guessed them exactly right. Because that's exactly what we're seeing today with the radar. So it's too much of a coincidence, you think, that, that they just happened to land in that place? It, is it, there is exactly the same... Exactly like the picture the same shows does, does what Martin believes and people like him, there are a lot of people like Martin. Now, listen, Martin has researched this. He believes what he's telling us. If, if it isn't true, is he really doing any harm or is it just an interesting theory? There's nothing wrong with people lo looking at data themselves and looking at buying their own cameras and taking their own uh, data and so on. Uh, I think the main problem with the, the moon conspiracy is that the people involved that would have to cover it up now also involve people in Japan with this new satellite, people in Russia, people in Australia, who would all have to be covering up when they do this follow-up. Uh, America, why would they be covering up what America did 50 years ago? I mean, even Russia at the time admitted they were beaten in the space race. So they had the most reason yeah. to, to not believe the Americans. Yes, to blow the whistle on it all, yeah. Well, look, we've been asking you at home, do you believe yes. that, that we landed on the moon? Here's how it's shaping up. Uh, yes, say 42, but no, 58. The no's have won it this morning, uh, Martin. So, 58 would be... I'm not surprised. Technology. People are questioning, researching. Uh, they're not believing blindly what, what they're told. You showed us that image. Yeah. If I showed you an image of a unicorn, does that mean that that's real, that unicorns exist? It's just an image. I don't know if that's real. 
Now, she's asking me to blindly believe that it is. Well, there's people well, you're that doing the same. You're you doing the same. You're telling you took exist. an image with your camera, right? Yeah. Science well, is always based on images. Well, well, I'm saying buy your own camera and take your own footage. Well, Don't you know believe what, I what I'm telling you. Of I course. think most of our lives are so boring, we want to believe <laughs> Absolutely. in the, um, the, you know, the things, the impossible and the contrary and whatever it is. Very interesting, you two. Very interesting. Not well, got us talking. Well, it's, today. it's certainly got. I know you Sarah's all just agreed. It's not very interesting. It's just rubbish. <laughs> You've just given me one of those looks there. Uh, but okay, enough said. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much, today. Uh, still to come. Oh, someone, just question. What? 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 Lee says we all saw that spacecraft take off. So if it didn't go to the moon, where did it go? Low Earth orbit. Low Earth orbit. We can't get past the vanilla radiation belt. That's not true. Well, you're way beyond me now. I don't understand any of that. <laughs> Two <laughs> documentaries to watch: Astronauts Gone Wild is one. And the other one is a funny thing happened on the way to the moon. Right, OK. Research. Why has nobody been to the moon in such a long time? <laughs> That's not a, an eight-year-old's question. <laughs> That's my question. I want to know, but I think I know. Because we didn't go there and... And that's the way it happened. And, and if it didn't happen, it's nice to know why it didn't happen. So in the future, if we want to keep doing something, we need to know why something stopped in the past that we wanted to keep it going. Uh, money is a good thing. Say again, please. Uh, who's coming 